Hi everyone, it's Narelle here. What I'd like to show you today is how I created the names for the placemats that I made for our table for Christmas Day. I purchased these printed placemats from a local craft store here in Australia and just added the text using iron-on vinyl. On some of them I've used holographic vinyl like this one and on others I've used glitter iron-on vinyl. The font that I'm using for this project is called Samantha. You can purchase Samantha font from Mighty Deals and I'll post a link to that site in the comments below along with a code that will give you 10% off your purchase. Samantha has a lot of alternates for each of the letters and lots of other special characters. I'm creating my text in Shortcuts A Lot 5 but you can do the same thing in other programs such as Inkscape, Microsoft Word or even Cricut Design Space. However, you will need to use a character map to access the alternates and special characters in those programs. In Shortcuts A Lot, you can access all of the alternates and special characters from within the program itself without the need to use a character map. The first thing I did was measure the available space on the placemat so I'd know what size to make my names. Then I added a circle of that size to my mat. And to do that, I go over to the library here, click on Shapes, and then go to Basic Shapes, and select the circle from the first row of shapes there. I click on that, and that will place a circle on my mat, and then I just need to resize it. So I go over to this little panel here, make sure the second little tab is selected, which is the position and size box, and then go down to the width and height here. I'm going to type 6 inches in the width box, or I could have put that into the height, it doesn't matter. And Because I've got Keep Proportion selected, when I click Enter, it's going to change the height to, the, to 6 inches as well. So now I've got that 6 inch circle on my mat there. Now because I already have one on there, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one. And next I need to create my text. So I'm going to go over to the list of icons here and I'm going to click uh, on the Type tool. Now if I click and hold that, I get other options. So for example, you can type, type your text vertically. If you want to type it into an arch, you can select that one here and then as you type, your text will become um, arched. But I just want the regular Type tool, so I'm going to select that one. Then I get this little cursor here and I'm going to click inside that circle and now I've got a flashing cursor and that in indicates where my text is going to be typed. So for this one I'm going to be doing um, the text so that it says Grandad and I'm going to be using the Australian spelling of Grandad which only has one D in the middle. And that's currently showing me the text in my font, in, sorry, in my default font. Now I want to change that to Samantha, so I'm going to go inside that letter where it's flashing. I'm going to double click so that I can select the entire word and now I can go and select a different font. Now it's going to show you all of the fonts that you have installed on your computer which most of us have a lot. Um, so what I've actually done is I've added Samantha as one of my favorite fonts and to add a, add a font as a favorite you just select the font and then you'll see this little icon here with the heart and the plus. If you click that it will add it to your favorites list. Then when you go over to here you click on the All tab and you click on Favorites and it will show you the, the fonts that you've added as your favorites. So I'm going to be using Samantha Italic so I'm going to click on that and now my word is shown in Italic. At the moment it's not showing in color and that's because it's being filled with white. Now to change that I need to first select that so I go back up to the corner here and select or click on the selection tool and then go over to the right here and I'm going to click on this third icon which is the, the fill and stroke icon and I go to the fill color. Now currently it's being filled with white so I'm going to click on that white icon 
the color picker comes up and I can select whatever color I want. So I'll just pick a random color and click OK and now you can see that my text is blue. I want to resize this text before I go any further. So while it's selected, I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keypad and then I'm going to drag that bottom right hand handle to make that text bigger. To move that text, I make sure I've got this four uh, pronged arrow and I can click down and then just drag that across. So I'm going to try and center that approximately and I can see that it's it's too big for my six inch um, place that I've got on the mat so I'll, again I'll hold down the shift key and the reason I'm doing that is what is to keep all of this in proportion so if I don't hold the shift key down and click that I can click it I can go horizontal or vertical and it, it just goes out of proportion and that's not what you want well you may but in this case I don't so I'm going to go up here I'm going to select undo so now I'll hold down the shift key and drag that in just to make that a little bit smaller. I've got a little bit of leeway either side so I'm not terribly worried if it goes a little bit outside that six inch area. So I'm just going to get that a little bit bigger and that should be fine. Okay, so that's the size that I want my text to be but now I want to go and select some different um, alternates for the, some of the letters. So you can see here in Grandma I've selected a different G. So the G that it defaults to is this one here and there are lots of other uh, alternates for each of the letters and I've just put some of the some of the alternates for the capital or the uppercase G here um, and I want to go and select one of those. So what I need to do is go back to the text icon, click on that, and then I'm going to click inside, in uh, around or on top of that word that I've just created. Now, shortcuts a lot's a little bit funny sometimes when you go to edit text. It it uh, doesn't highlight the text, it, but it, for me, it's putting this blue box above it, and that's actually. Um, indicating that that word has been selected. So it's a little bit tricky to, to get exactly where you want to be. So I'm going to have another go and where it's sitting at the moment I'm just going to press the backspace key and that actually removes the whole thing. That's because that whole word was selected. So I'm going to undo that so I can click undo again or I can go control Z which does the same thing that's going to bring granddad back so I'm just so now you can see my flashing cursor is at the front so now if I use my arrow keys and go one to the one place to the right that will put my cursor key just after the uppercase G and I'm going to use the backspace key now and it's just getting rid of that uppercase G so now I'm going to go over to my fonts panel here it's showing me all of the letters and uh, numerals and all the other special characters from Samantha Italic. And if I use this scroll button here and drag that down, you can see that it starts with the numerals. It goes through and does the, upper, the regular uppercase letters and then the lowercase letters and some of the punctuation marks. And the further I go down, the more um, you're going to see. So right now it's showing you all the alternates for the uppercase A. If I keep going, I'm going to go and eventually get to the uppercase G. Now there's not as many options for some of the letters as there are for the others. For example, the, cat, the uppercase A, there was a, a, about a hundred, I didn't count them, but there were a, a lot. With G, there's only about 10. Um, so the one that I want is this one here that I've used for grandma but to use that you just basically select the one that you want and I'm going to pick one that I don't want so I'm going to select this one here it when you hover over the letter it increases the, the size so you can see it a little bit better so then I just click on that one and it will change the G over here 
Now that's not the one I want, but I find the easiest way to actually see what my word's going to look like is to add it to the word. And then if I don't like it, I then go Control Z to undo that. And then I can then go back and pick a different one. So now I just want to find this one that I've used here and I'm pretty sure it's this one and that's the one I want there. So now I want to go and select the last D so I'm going to, to use my cursor keys on my or sorry my arrow keys on my keypad and go to the end and then select backspace to get rid of that D. I'll go back over here find the lowercase d options and I've gone past them so here they are here and I'm going to pick a d for this one and I kind of I think I like this one here yeah I really do think I'm just going to backspace sorry I'm going to control z to get rid of that and try the one before it and I think either of them are nice uh, and yeah I think I'll just go with this one here so what I've got here now is Grandad with a different G and a different D so once you've changed the letters that you want changed you're ready to go and save this as an SVG so that you can upload that into Cricut Design Space uh, there's one little thing that I need to do before that and you can't really see it unless I enlarge this so I'm just going to enlarge that and you can see there that where each of the letters join to it, join the, the next one, uh, it's cutting into that letter. And if I don't do something to fix that, that's exactly how that's going to cut. So it'll cut all those letters individually. So I'm going to go back to the size that I had it. Now you can see that I might, depending on the letters that you, you select, you may have to go and resize your word to fit back inside that six inch space which is what I need to do here okay so I need to select my text and if you can't select your text you can come over here to the layer name panel and select it there now hold that down and check the size again I think I can go a little bit bigger okay so what I need to do to make this ready so that it cuts as one individual um, image and not individual little letters is that I need to weld them now in shortcuts a lot the weld option is actually called union and to do that we're going to go up to the path menu and then the first option there is union so we click on union and now it's welded all of those letters together or any of the letters that touch it has welded together so my G is going to cut separate but that's how that's supposed to look anyway so there's my my granddad word ready to be exported to do that I'm going to go up to the file menu and then I'm going to select export I'm going to give this a name which will be Grandad of course and then it's going to default to SVG which is what I want there are other options you can export these as P, um, PNG files um, or JPEGs but for um, use in design space the easiest way to do it is to, to leave it as SVG and then I'm going to click Save now some of these options here the first one here that's very important is that you must have design space compatible checked and that uh, will save everything at the correct resolution so that it imports into design space at exactly the same size that you've saved it here the other option that I always select is this one here which is selection only and the reason that I always have that on is because when I'm designing something I pretty much always will have lots of things going on on my mat for example I've got other you know other words here I've got grandma I've got Maddie I've got these G's up here I don't want those to export into design space I only want what I've selected here so that's why I have selection only the show registration marks I just leave off 
and that's all the changes that I need to do there. So now I'm going to click OK. Now you don't get a message saying that it's been exported, you just have to know that it has and it will have saved into the location that you selected during that save process. So it's important that you remember where it is that you saved it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Design Space and I'm going to upload that word. So I have my project here with the, the names that I've already uploaded. I'm going to go to the Upload button, then Upload Image and Browse. And then I need to go to the location that I saved my previous names. So I'm pretty sure I put it in this directory here. So there we are. Now I go and select Grandad. And then it will show up here. And now it's going to show the preview of my Word. Now I can change the image name if I want to, but I'm going to leave that. I could put tags in there if I want to, but I'm not going to. So from here I just go down to the bottom right corner and click Save. And that's going to bring me back to the Upload Image screen. I want to add this one to my project, so I select that. I have the green box around that to show that that's the one that's going to be inserted. And then I go to the right hand corner again and select Insert Images. And that will bring that into my canvas. And as I said, because we saved it as a Design Space compatible um, SVG, it's brought it in as at the same size as it was in Shortcuts a lot. So that is how you create your text in Shortcuts a lot, export it to SVG, uh, and then import that into Design Space. So hopefully that helped you with using fonts that have alternates. Um, I highly recommend um, creating that this kind of text outside of Design Space. It's just so much easier. Um, and I'll also put a link to where you can purchase shortcuts a lot in the comments below. So please let me know if this was helpful. If there's anything else that you'd like me to cover, please also let me know that. So thanks for watching and bye for now.